If you have a Bible, turn with me tonight in the book of John, the one chapter. If you want the one this, it will be the one verse, too. I'm going to be moving around a little bit, but not a whole lot. We're going to be talking some about the divine plan of God. I believe that we're in a time where the, none, of us, none of us understands what's going on. You know, a lot of times I, I make the statement that we don't know where to, to scratch this or why this, you know what I mean? Because we're, we're caught up in, in a time frame that we really don't know what's happening. But we do, we do know that it's in God's divine will. And I believe that the, some of this is punishment on the U.S. for some of the things that the United States has been doing. Yeah. He's delivered us from so many battles yeah. and delivered folks from so many different things. And, you know, there's things going on with this race stuff in the, in the country and I cannot believe people that can't have gratitude that, that they've got as good as they do. That they always got to blame somebody else situation they're in, it's always somebody else's fault. It's not our fault that the church ain't full, it's a bunch of holy rollers down the road. That's the kind of attitude that people take in the church, you know. They've got everybody to run out of the church. They don't let them go to church anymore. On account of that bunch. Well, they need to see a light from all of us. And it wasn't in God's divine plan for us just to sit back and not do anything. I don't care who we are, there's something that we can do for Christ. And I think we're going to tell you that do you do all you can do for Him? I try. Do I succeed? No. I do all that I, I can, I believe, at the time. But when I go off somewhere else and I get hit again with it, sometimes I just stay naked. Got these one, one of these attitudes like, well, God understands. You know, I've had them several times. But when He instructs us and tells us He just wants us to do something, chances are we ought to be doing it. And I like what Billy said when he was up here singing a while ago. He said, if you feel like you need to come and pray, come on. That's been one of my sayings in this church ever since I've been here, and that is, if you stand up back there, sitting back there in your chair and you feel like you need to come to the altar and you don't, you're going to wait to the end of the service. The devil will talk you out of going before you end the end of service. You need to come then. Just get on up and come up here and pray. You won't bother me in every bit. I'll get freaky. Come up here and stand there and you feel that nobody will bother you. <laughs> they, won't, they won't show you the door. I guarantee that. You just pray on. Right? And uh, matter of fact, I'm going to get down and crawl around with you a little while. It's what matter. But God's divine will. And it's it's his let's see what I've done. His God, God's divine plan. I'll use that word. How's that? That this world was spoken in the form that it is. The universe, everything here, was all created by him. And the very means of the reason that you're here and we're here and how we're here, God created all that too. Now, what He didn't create me, do He created the stuff that made you. you know, everything in here, that in you, God created it, or you couldn't be here. And He created it for Himself. He didn't create it for the devil. He didn't build a, He didn't build. He didn't build hell for you and I. He built hell for the devil. And his angels. And that was his divine plan from the very beginning. He knew that Jenny Gray would be set in this church tonight. He knew that that person down in, in uh, Abington, I don't know who they were, that committed suicide this evening. I don't know who they were. But I do know that that, that, that wasn't something that God was very pleased with. You know, I'll tell you this much, he knew about it. He knew about it way before it ever happened. And you know, when somebody says, 
The Lord took them out. No, God didn't take them out. Uh, they took themselves out. You get killed in a car wreck, doing something you shouldn't be doing, don't say that God took you out. You were in the wrong place at the right time. If I couldn't kill you, God would never say, Thou shalt not kill, if he was the only one that was ever going to kill. So there's all kinds of things that's in God's plan that I don't really understand all of. Do you? And I'm not going to pretend to you that I do know all about it. I know what God tells me. And I know how to get across what God tells me. And he said that as, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. Amen. I was telling Ricky out the corner before we ever came up here. I said, Ricky, ever since you've been here, I've been treating you like your baby. Did I tell you that? Why? Because that's the only way you can grow. You don't grow on meat and taters. You know, you grow on the sincere milk that a newborn babes in, in Christ is. And, you know, Ricky will tell you he's coming into his own in the ministry. He's doing a good job. You know, some of y'all need to make sure you hear, hear him preach and go to the go. But the sincere milk of the work we grow by. And you show me a church house that the people are are always in, in, in a turmoil and things is always going on people backbite and everything inside the church. I can tell you quickly is they're not getting the baby food. They're getting the meat and taters. What you're saying in that song to convert us to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there, leave it there. And when he was singing that, I was sitting here in church, it was going in my eyes because that's an old song from a long time ago that I used to hang on to a, a post in, in a, a pit in Tennessee church of God. When my grandmother taking me to church about four and five years old, so you could take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. That was one of the songs I sung, because they sung it, I knew it, word for word. I was in God's divine plan back then. I'm still in His plan. And I don't care what walk of life you came from, you're in God's plan. He knew you were going to be here. When he created the earth, before the foundation of the world, he knew that you were going to be here. If he didn't know, Jesus wouldn't have to come and save you. You see, he knew. Uh, now, let's read some of this. John chapter 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name again. I come to you. I thank you for this day and this hour. Lord, for the spirit that we felt tonight, we thank you for Bill. Lord, in the spirit that we felt tonight, Lord, in this service, knowing that God, that people use their heart to praise you, and if it's coming from the heart, we can receive a blessing from you. And Father, we see too much of the flesh inside your house as it is. We need to see more spiritual worship and fellowship with one another. Heavenly Father, with this message that I'm about to preach, God, I just pray that I can feel your divine presence in this thing. And Lord, that the Holy Spirit will be heavy in this building as we read this, this scripture that you've given me tonight. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Church, sing with me. God bless America. God bless the
thing that's going on in this country. You know, you look and you see there are so many smoke screens and so much corrupt in the politics on both sides, Republican and Democrat right now, that it's not funny. If we just knew all the things that was going on, we'd probably uh, be about ready to leave this place. Or just asking God to take us on out. Because there's a bunch of junk going on here now. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Somebody say, the Bible says that I believe it. Amen. I believe it because I know that the Bible is true. It's God's word. Now, in him was light, and the light was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, and the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not, he was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of the light. That light is the true light which shineth, or which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Somebody say, that's me. The light that lights me. He, will, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You believe? Amen. I'm a child of God. Amen. Child of God. Which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And if I didn't preach anything else tonight, if I didn't say that little word about anything this morning, I've already spoken enough scripture right here out of the first chapter of the book of John that the whole world would be saved if they would only just listen and pay attention to what's going on. Because if you would listen to this, it would mean something to you, and you would be reaching and digging and trying to find out the rest of it. It's some kind of a mystery that's planted in there about how can all this be, but yet nobody cares. They just take it for a fact while well, I can't be. But nobody cares whether it really is the truth or not because they don't want to take the time spiritually to let something get inside them that might convict them a little bit if they're doing something that's not right with God and God is not pleased with it. And somebody said, well, I don't think Christians do. You need to look around a little bit. You need to look around. When I was in, in, uh, in uh, Florida one time, I went to my mom's church. She belonged to the Baptist church over there in, in, uh, in Geneva. My uncle Roy went there and his wife went there. Dad wanted to go to crab, crab trees if he ever went, but he wouldn't go either, so mom just went where she could go. But the Sunday school teacher that morning got up and was standing there and the, 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 the thing taking up the offer, he started weaving a little bit. He said, Whoa, I had too many highballs last night, you know. And if my dad would have been there, he'd have thrown a songbook at him. He would have. But then a few weeks later, the pastor of the church came over to the to my dad's trailer and told dad that he was going to go to hell because he wouldn't give up his golf game and go to church on Sunday. Dad showed him the door. Showed him the door. You see, we offend too many people out of, out of the, and that's not God's way of the stuff. The word of God is supposed to love people into the assembly. Amen. Right. And you know, when you come in here and you see things that are going on, you got people nagging at you from one end of the church to the other, you know God's not in it. And when God's not in it, it's time to hush it. It's time to stop it and put that, that dilly-dally stuff in and get it out of the way and then go back to what you need to be doing, worshiping the Lord, serving God. Amen. Serving Him with gladness, but realizing who that He is and what He's doing. I love the Lord with all my heart. There's nothing they can ever take the love of Christ out of my heart. I guarantee you that for one moment. You ask me if I believe eternally saved? Yes, I do. But I know that I am. Because I'm not giving up nothing. Amen? The only way I can be lost tomorrow is if I first take the word of God. And do like Judas is the character did. And turn my life away from him and say, I ain't doing it no more. I don't believe in Jesus. If 
buddy, you know this cowboy will never do that. And you know the sad part about it is, they're doing it all over the world Amen. for a dollar. There's people that are acting just like they have in Jezebel right now, aborting babies, killing babies, yanking them out of the, the womb even in the ninth month, and claiming to know God. They know he's not pleased with it, I guarantee you that, if we're doing that. But that's not his divine will that we would do that. But his divine will will work in our lives, I guarantee you that. There's a lot of things that I don't understand about God's Word. But one thing I do know that he said, I would reap what I sow. He said that it's not a good thing to fall into, the, it's a fearful thing really, to fall into the hands of a just God. He said, what you reap, you're going to sow. Now, I've got to get on with this now. And... Uh, do what I started to do. Uh, he's, uh, his plan was when he started this thing in the very beginning that he wanted people to come to him on their own. Now he gave us every tool that we would need to come to him. He came to the Jews, he told the Jews, he tried to get them to do it one way, they would not, he knew that way it wasn't going to work to start with. God don't make mistakes. Somebody said, well, he blew it there, didn't he? No, God knew what he was doing. He knew that that was not going to work, that there was something going to have to be better to come on down the road. But there had to be some there in the Old Testament for a schoolmaster for the New Testament so that we would know how we're supposed to live for God and not follow the path that Israel did. We should do it according to his will and his way. But what we do is we try to pick in our own route that we want to go into our way better. Don't tell God that your way is better than his. <laughs> Ain't that stupid? <laughs> that is dumber than a rock. Boy, if somebody say something like that, like, my way is better, Lord. <laughs> Ain't no way. God's got the plan and it's perfect. There is nothing wrong with the plan that God laid down for salvation, quit trying to change it and make something out of it that it ain't. Or I've said that wrong. Don't do it like it is not. <laughs> you do it like he says that it is. That's that more proper. Okay, well, I'm just a little bit of it. He knows how to talk. Forget that. But when we're looking at the things that God's laid down for us, look at John 3.16. How many of you, that was one of the first scriptures you ever learned? Huh? I could, I could go to that before I started uh, grade school. John 3, 16. But I'm going to read a little bit more than just John 3, 16. Okay. He said, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jews, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher that comes from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with who? Him. So, how, many, how long has it been since somebody said that about you? You had to be somebody that comes from God because nobody can do those things that you do Unless God be with you. You see, the Pharisees were sending him out on the street. They were sending him where he was doing his works at. He was doing all these miracles, man, and they're following him around, and they're seeing him do all these things that he just laid hands on people, spitting in the dirt, making them eyeballs and everything else. He just sent all that good works that Jesus is doing and said, He got to come from God because he couldn't have done that thing if he wasn't. Our priest can't do that. So you got to be a rabbi that knows what you're confused because nobody ever seen anything like it. Has anybody been confused about you? Wonder what happened there. I've seen that fella before, and I know that uh, that. That rack and that, that muffler shop, or tire shop, whatever it was, fell down on Bill Taylor's foot. 
and his foot was on the mast and crushed. And he, I, I, I seen him when he come dragging that foot up here in front of church. And, and Dan Crofton and, and Clarence Brockman prayed for him right there in front of that pew. And he stood there trembling and thanking God for touching his body. And he walked to the back of the church, not even limping on that foot anymore. And never had pain in it from then on out. He come in and out of this building all the time. That foot got healed right here in this service. People said, I don't believe that. I preach, the devil is under my feet. I'm not going to have him have him out here with it. He can put his hand upon me and on me and his son. I ain't his son. I'm not going to do it. I tell him, he's, on my, he's under my feet. Some lady popped up in the back of the church and says, now, Brother Krauss, you go over in Exodus and the the Bible says, so I'm supposed to go back to walking like this. And my leg turned out because God don't do that because the devil loved me when I limped in the church. So I hit a semi head on the motorcycle. You do that, you're going to limp. I was living in church, I was living back out. I got the prayer line down in Tri County Assembly of God. I said, not Tri County, it was Westside Pentecostal. If the guy out of California come in there to preach, Bob Morris wanted me to go in to see him. I got in there and I couldn't play the guitar. That'd be like you not been able to play your piano. I couldn't play my guitar because my hand was all crippled up. I wasn't even supposed to be able to do this. Just about like that, and I was back to squeezing tennis ball. He had a prayer line going. Bob said, Danny, he said, you're going to pray until they pray for you. I said, all them people fall in the floor. <laughs> and I don't know about this now, but I'm going up there. I want my hand prayed for because I want to play my guitar. And I said, oh, he prayed for me. He pushed me down. God healed me without him pushing me down. I ain't going down on that floor. <laughs> I'm standing there, true. I'm standing like right here. He comes down there and prays for this guy here, puts his hand on his head like that, and he got his back up and sat down on the bench. He turns to me and he says, Father, don't need that hit the floor. Boom. <laughs> the man never even touched me. <laughs> I said, uh, I'm laying there and I'm trying to get up. I said, that man never even touched me. And I hit that floor. And I'm questioning myself a little bit about it. I said, God, it's got to be real. I'm going to tell you something else, too. I loved it. It wasn't too much longer until Mavis was in the little church of God over there, right behind the, the red light there in Ross, the only red light we had at that time. And she's in that little church. And they prayed for her, and she went down. Man, she was down there a long time. So the cops come up, come up to him and said, Brother Cross? said, who do do who? He said, well, that's the way he said hallelujah. He said, who do do who? He said, don't worry about Miss Cross. He said, she's going to be all right. I said, son, God's giving her the, the gift of healing. I know what's going on there. And I tell you what, when God tells her to pray for somebody, things begin to happen. It's still that way to this day, and that was a long time ago. You see, when the Spirit of the Lord is moving, don't question God and what He said because it's His divine plan. It's not mine. That's how come we never grow in what we're supposed to be. We can't even get out of the baby stage of arguing over what way we're going to march with God. That's not like a bunch of kids who want to shoot marbles or something in the, in the bread field at the, at, the, at the school. There used to be more fights started over something like Van Hopscotch. <laughs> Push one of the girls out of the way. A man, if I talk them, and the girls will pull your eyes out. <laughs> but anyway, John 3.16, we've got to get more into this. But just pray for me, church, and I'll get this up and get going. Jesus answered and said to him, Burly, burly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he get out of the city of with God. Nicodemus said to him, How can this a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Do you realize how ridiculous that sounds? 
For somebody to say that to you, you got to be born again. If you don't know Christ, you don't know the plan of salvation. You want to know stupid that if you, if you look and you say that to some people that don't know anything about it. Even though it's the truth. When we say it, they don't believe it because they don't know anything about it. They've not had the milk. They don't have it. They can't drink something they don't have. But that must have sounded like some, something that some idiot would tell that Pharisee. Uh, no. We know that you're a teacher that come from God, but born again? I've already been born a long time, not be born again. You see, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit, and that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's Bible, once again, that we get there in a few minutes, too. But he said, Jesus, and Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Somebody go, oh Lord. I did that. Have you had a born again experience? Yes. You know what it felt like when you got born again? You know what? I like to compare it to this. How many of you know how God's love feels? You know, when you... When you give your heart to the Lord and you get down to pray and ask God to save you, the Lord comes in and God so loved the world, think about this, that he gave the sacrifice, his son, and everything so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. If he did that, what a great love. And when that great love, when Jesus took the cross with him and said, Forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they do, that great love is now planted in your heart. For God so loved the world. The world didn't love them. The world still didn't love them. They don't they realize who he is and they accept his plan of salvation. It's a righteous plan. It's a divine plan. And that's the only way they're going to heaven. We can, we can come up with all the great messages that God will allow to preach. And not get anybody saved. And no conviction upon their hearts. And we become a taking symbol in the seventy grace. We're not, we're not accomplishing what we really need to be doing. Sure, we got to grow. We've got to grow in the grace of God, and it takes, a, it takes a man of God to get you there, too. That's what's wrong with it. Another thing that's wrong with it. Too many people out yonder instructing you and telling you how you have to, have to do it to get rich. Amen. It ain't about getting rich, because you're already rich in the Spirit. You will not get anything any better than the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. If you go with me to Romans <coughs> chapter 10. Better move on here because if I don't, we'll be here too late. Everybody wants to come back. Don't have nobody here tomorrow night. Yeah. 10, verse 10, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Okay. He said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, Man believeth unto righteousness, and in the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be a what? Shame. What does that mean? Shame. Yeah. Yes. But you know what it really means? We've got too much pride. Hello. 
We've got too much pride. We don't want to let nobody know that we're that way. Because we're afraid that we'll say, they'll say something to us like we're Bible thumpers. We're Jesus fanatic. I am a Jesus fan. I am a fanatic. Amen? But I'm not, I'm not too heavenly minded that I can't be a little bit earthly good. I can tell you that. But no one, no one what the scripture says. Go with me now back to uh, Acts here for just a moment. Yeah, let's do Acts chapter 3. That's a good word. Now Peter and John went up together to, uh, to the temple of the earth, being the ninth hour, and a certain man named from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate, gate, at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms with them that entered into the temple. We got a, a man sitting in front of the temple, and I want to break this right down right now and, and sign this on to you too. This man is sitting in front of the temple out there at the beautiful gate. They laid him there daily to our prayer. The reason they laid him there daily, they had to carry him there, but he couldn't walk. He blamed his mother's womb. It's because they knew that if they put him in front of that church and they sit him down right there, that everybody that walked in there would go in the nickel or a dime or a quarter or maybe even a dollar bill. You know, because he was in front of the house of God. They wanted to be seen of God giving him an honor. And these guys that take him are doing it. They probably charging him to do it and get part of the money for doing it. But they, they know he's going to get it. He would get something there from that gate. You can see those those guys on the street corners when they would walk by. They just walk right on by him. Look off across the road. Maybe go across the road so they didn't have to come in contact with him because he didn't want to give him nothing that was on the street. But when he was by the house of God, they would give him an And Peter told him, said, look on us. Silver and gold have I done, but such as I have, I give up. In the name of Jesus Christ, raise up and walk. And the rest of the story is history. Because when a man talked, he leaped to his feet. Immediately his ankle bone received strength. I believe when they received strength, he went to dancing around in there, MC Hammer could have kept up with that. I believe that was not hard. Michael Jackson didn't have nothing on that dude. I believe he just tore him up. But the, the next one was when Paul and Silas. We went through this some the other day. When Paul was on his road to, to Damascus, he was going into martyr saints. And when Jesus saw him, he said, Saul, my persecutor is down me. Because there was suddenly a big light that shined around about him. The light that shines in darkness that we just read about in the book of today. And he said, Saul, my persecutors thou me. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And well, I didn't get this from just the other day. The Lord and the Lord said, The Lord says, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the proof. Now, I am Jesus. He used a name that the apostle Paul saw at that time. Hated. He did not like Jesus. He was out trying to kill the people or take them back to Jerusalem so they could be stoned. They was preaching the word of Jesus. That's what he was doing. But Christ hit him on the road to Damascus. He was spitting blind and had to stay blind for three days. Now he's starting to, to humble up just a little bit, I'd say, but now. But he didn't like the name of Jesus. He hated the name. That's why he was martyring the saints. He was out talking about something that he did not like. Got him in some trouble with the Lord. But see, 
That was God's divine plan. He knew Paul was going to be doing it. And he knew he wouldn't stop at nothing to kill them for doing it. So he'd get them back in, get them in the line with him. He'd, give his, he'd go to his death preaching the same thing. Which is exactly what he did. But when they had Paul and Silas got locked up in jail, and the Bible says that the earthquake and these things was uh, moving in such a way that
come to my house and pour down the rain. Wouldn't come in the house, blow his horn outside. I go outside, no shirt on. We was trying to get ready for church. He sat in the front of the driveway, in the front of my house. He said, Brother Danny, he said, it looks like men were ripping the roofs when they get a divorce. He said, I want you to pray. I'm not praying that. I'm not going to pray that at all. He said, why? I said, because he's the only reason you're just still together. He said, what? I said, you're still together, ain't you? He said, yeah, said, that's God's work. The devil's the one trying to tear you up. You take charge of what's going on. You're the spiritual leader of your house. You take charge of that. He told his job was the Bible thumper in the house to tell her what else she's supposed to do. He was going to be the one to do all the prep. The Holy Spirit will work with his wife to say, what does in my life? Amen? Believe it or not, she had a lot of education when it comes to churches. She'd been able to tell me some things. Along, see them, and say, you better do it. <laughs> She had because she knows that sometimes, sometimes I have a temper. And when I get upset, I don't read sometimes. It plays out. But you know, I'm harmless. I'm harmless until somebody picks her hands up above her belt. When they get that high of their hands, it's always the Bible's on. I don't get a, give them a chance to suck a bunch of men, I ain't going to give the devil a chance to either. I'm looking for him. I'm looking for him. And when something starts coming up, I know how to pray. I know how to pray. I know how to see God. That's one of the things that God gave me. It was in his divine plan that we all pray. And we pray for our loved ones and our family. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Faith comes to God. I know it's the names of the Lord that pulled me out of that pond. Nobody else 